In today's video, I'm going to talk about geography fieldwork and the three terms we need to know for evaluation of fieldwork, accuracy, reliability and validity. These are all terms used in the GCSE fieldwork, but are also applicable to A-level. First term we're going to look at is accuracy. Accuracy is about making sure that the measurements we take actually reflect reality. So if I was measuring the height of this Olympic rower uh, and I measured it and said, I thought it was six foot. We can see to the naked eye that this person is obviously over six foot in terms of their height. They're actually six foot six inches. And so the measurement that I've taken doesn't reflect the actual reality. There are lots of common mistakes that we that we might make in our field work. And I'm going to talk about some of them in terms of if I was measuring the height of this person that can be applied to um, our general field work. So. Um, I might not use the equipment correctly. Uh, what I mean by that is if I was measuring the height of this person uh, um, and I only went up to their shoulder height by uh, taking the bar up to that point for measuring them and not head height, then I haven't used the equipment correctly and therefore the measurement that I've taken doesn't accurately reflect how tall they are. Similarly, I might actually read the figures off. So on the ruler, I read it off as six foot. Um, because I've got bad eyesight when it actually says six foot six and therefore the data that I've recorded isn't accurate because it doesn't reflect reality. Similarly, I might write it down wrong. Someone might tell me, um, the person I'm working with, that it's actually six foot six, but I hear them wrong and write it down as six foot. Therefore, that data that I've put in my log sheet is inaccurate. An example that I might use in an urban environment, I was taking a decibel reader of the the noise in an area and it says 66.9 on the machine but I read it wrong or someone calls it out to me wrong and I write it down to 75 decibels that would be inaccurate because it's not reflecting the reality of how noisy it is in that area. Another common mistake is when we don't have the equipment that we're using calibrated. So an example would be if I was measuring the weight of anything um, and using scales if I hadn't set it to zero, if I hadn't calibrated it to zero, then the weights that are recorded, anything that I would weigh would be slightly too high. And that means it wouldn't actually affect the real weight of whatever I was weighing. Similarly with a decibel reader we've just talked about, if I don't zero it, um, anything I record would seem slightly noisier than it was in reality. So we need to make sure we use the equipment correctly, we record the results um, accurately, but also that any equipment we're using is correctly set up so we can have accurate um, readings. If I was going to improve accuracy um, in, in a study I was doing, for example, if I was doing an environmental quality survey and I wanted to see how noisy it was in terms of traffic to be able to get a really accurate reading in terms of an environmental quality survey, I would use a decibel reader, which is a scientific piece of equipment. This is a digital decibel reader. I'd use that rather than my ears. Um, my ears um, wouldn't be as accurate because it depends on the quality of my hearing. Um, it's not, they're not scientific equipment and it would be slightly subjective. It would be my opinion where if I do use a decibel reader, it's a scientific bit of equipment, but it will also give me a precise figure that I could use. So it gives me 66.9 here and then I can compare that figure um, with an, uh, another area and there I can get an actual bit of quantitative data that I can compare rather than my subjective feeling from what I hear um, from my ears. If I was going to improve the uh, accuracy of a land use survey, I'm obviously taking a tally and saying how many residential, how many industrial there are. If I wanted to make that even better, what I would take is I'd take a, a GOAD map, which is a secondary data uh, land use map with me. I can see the right here, the centre of Oxford, and therefore it accurately, accurately tells me what each building is. It tells me um, if this is a shop, it tells me if it's a bank, and therefore when I'm tallying, I can just double check to make sure that I am correctly identifying the buildings. This would improve the accuracy of my primary data collection. The next term I'm going to look at is uh, reliability. And this is the idea that the measurements I'm taking, how consistent are they? Could I do this investigation a couple of times and reproduce, um, reproduce the same results, the same data um, again and again and again? An example I'm going to use here is the idea if I was taking a traffic count on a street in an urban area over a week, I might do that by Monday to Thursday, collect that data every morning on the same street at 9am. 
However, um, if I accidentally oversleep and therefore have to take some of that data on the Friday um, uh, at rush hour in the evening, that would make my results less reliable. This is because I have changed the consistency of my method. I was doing it in the morning, Monday to Thursday, but then I've decided to do it um, whether by accident or by choice in the evening, and therefore I can't really compare those results. So I've changed the consistency, and as soon as I change the consistency, my results and data are less reliable. Similarly, if I was um, using a decibel reader to take traffic noise, if I um, use a really accurate bit of equipment, but I only measure the noise once, I get an accurate reading because it's very, very good equipment, but the results are not reliable because it's only one reading. Therefore, the, the, the data I'm collecting is from a too small a sample size. Uh, with only one reading, uh, there could be problems with that, and that result could be completely anomalous, and I might not actually be able to re reproduce that result consistently. So I would have to make sure that I would take multiple measurements using that decibel reader to reduce any anomalies and increase reliability. The, the main improvements we can talk in any investigation reliability would to make sure that we've got a large enough sample size. That idea that one bit of data, if I take it, can really skew results. Um, and if I'm out there taking data with um, other students, the best way I can improve my reliability is make sure I combine their primary data with my primary data, and then we take an average of the data and the results we've collected. And the reason we do this is because it reduces the effect of those anomalies, those anomalies that would skew our data in one direction. The last key term I'm going to talk about is validity. Validity is the idea that the measurements that we're taking in our data collection uh, we have to make sure that they're both appropriately collected, but also representative of, of the area, population or environment that we're taking them from. I should be able to ask uh, the question at the end of my investigation, did the methods I use accurately measure what I intended them to measure? So if I'm measuring land use change in an urban area, did the methods I use help me to do that uh, in an accurate way? Uh, and therefore I can get valid conclusions out of the results and the data that I've collected. An example would be, I need to make sure I've got an appropriate sampling strategy. Um, if I get an appropriate sampling strategy, all of the results that I get could be valid. Um, an example, if I'm going to do land use change in a, in a city, I would perhaps use a Burgess model. So this is the idea that we've got this theory that we can separate a city into different land use types. So suburbs on the edge and then CBD all the way into the centre. Um, if I did a stratified sampling uh, approach, that means I would collect data from each of those zones on a, normally on a transect going into a city. Um, and then that would mean that I could compare how the land use changed from the commuter zone all the way into the CBD by looking at how it changes in each zone. That would be an appropriate way of looking at land use change um, throughout a city. However, I might decide to use an inappropriate sampling strategy. So if I use random sampling, that's where I'd um, look at the whole city um, and then I would choose my sites by random which basically means that everywhere has an equal chance of being chosen. What I could do is set up the city into grids and then choose a random number generator to choose my sites for where I would collect my data. That would potentially come up with um, not valid data because it could be that in that random selection all of the sites that are chosen for me are located in one area. So imagine if all of the, the sites that was going to take in data came from this central business district, that would be unrepresentative of land use change for the whole city because all of the results I'm getting are clustered just in the centre and therefore it would be hard to actually look at land use change throughout the whole city. This is where we have not chosen an appropriate a sampling strategy and therefore the results are not valid because they don't represent the whole city. Another example could be if I just take a snapshot. So I've taken a, a snapshot of this um, derelict uh, street, maybe to use as part of an environmental quality survey or for like field sketch annotations. I've got to make sure that that is representative of the whole area. Um, it, it might be that this is just one view. And so if I want to make sure that my um, conclusions are more valid, to just use one uh, bit of data wouldn't be uh, 
uh, very valid. I'd have to get multiple bits of data to make sure that the conclusions um, were more valid. So maybe I'd use this photograph with an EQS score from the local area. It could be, we can see just in the distance there that the actual housing over there looks a lot better. So this photograph might not be representative of that whole area. Similarly, I need to not just choose appropriate sampling, but also appropriate methods to collect my, my data. So if I was doing a land use survey uh, throughout a city, if I actually use a land use survey, that would be an appropriate technique. It tells me how much residential, how much industrial, how much commercial, etc., etc. it is. However, if I was doing uh, a change in land use in a city and I decided to take temperature of each area, it's not really relevant to my my investigation. It doesn't tell me anything about land use um, change. It doesn't tell me about differences in land use. And so that would not be appropriate for the investigation I'm taking. So not only do we have to have a sampling strategy that's appropriate, but also a methods that are appropriate. The, the best way to kind of think of validity is a combination of, of both accuracy and reliability. And if I have both of them, I'm valid. So if I collect data um, in an accurate way and I collect it in a reliable way, so using an appropriate sampling strategy and having enough data, it will give me valid results from which I can make valid conclusions. So those are the three main terms, accuracy, reliability and validity. And those are the terms you need to know for evaluation of GCSE fieldwork and also A-level fieldwork.